Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. Getting a lot of epics sent in lately. Hope you don't mind, guys. I know there's some of you out there that like a more varied range of content, but you know what? I can only really bring to you what I find on my own and the replays that get sent to me. And people are just sending in the longer games, the longer team games. Uh, I'm more partial to them as well because they do get a few more views. So there's a little bit of a selfishness on my part there. Uh, but yes, if you've got some good. 2v2s or in ladder, like 1v1 ladder matches or you've seen some good ones from other people send them my way and uh, yeah I might pick them I'd love to show some more varied content do keep those replays coming in incidentally guys I want to thank you for all your kind wishes about my ridiculous injury I did to myself apologies if that was a little bit too much that's sure for you, you guys to digest uh, I'm assuming if you were squeamish you didn't click on it that's probably sensible uh, but I'd just like to say, it really didn't hurt. It was awesome. Like, the relief afterwards. If you get ever get an injury like that, guys, go and see a medical professional and get that done. Because, damn, it was like instant relief. All right, that's enough of that business. Let's get on with today's game. It's going to be a custom 4v4. It's going to be featuring some of your all-time favorite pros and mine. And it's going to go down on the infamous Setons Clutch. I'm ready. You guys are ready. And the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on to the game zone and see how they're going to get on. Ching! Ka-ching! All right, the Settons thing. We know what we're dealing with here. We've been here many a time before, and we will certainly be here many a time again. We'll call this Team 1, as usual, up at the top of this. Team 2 down here at the bottom. Interesting expletive to kick things off from Turbo. Thank you, sir. And while we're talking about Turbo, here he is enacting rearguard air position for Team 1 in Halle Borange Orange, going Aeon, how frightfully sensible, opening first land. Down here at the cliffs in this season's fabulous Vivacious Violet, it's Nexus going UEF, opening first air and going first land. Going to get that early transport out, of course, to get the side island. Uh, on the causeway for Team 1 is Hakamaka Makamaka. You know him better as UD. And incidentally, I'm well aware, thanks to a trillion comments that I've had over the course of the last, I don't know, 40 casts or whatever, that uh, I'm not pronouncing this right. And uh, it's probably going to go on that way, I'm afraid, because I don't know who this is. I know this is like some kind of, it's a streamer, some people are saying, is it? So, yeah, I don't know. It's I'm not down with the kids and their disco music. That's the problem. So I don't know. <laughs> it's UD anyway. I'm going to use Hakamaka interchangeably with UD. I just refuse to go Hachamaka or Hachamacha Macha. I don't know. I, I It's UD. There he is. He's going Aeon in baby pink, opening first land. That's the end of it. Okay, let's check out the last player from Team 1. It's Daxton the Bold, who's a 2,000 rated player, but I don't recall this name. Uh, I'm guessing this might have been a name change. Probably should have checked it out before. If you guys want to do that for me now and chuck it in the comment section below, I would very much appreciate it. Probably find all sorts of information down there, interesting or otherwise, from your fellow audience members. And uh, anyway, he's going UEF opening first land, second air, and going lime green. So there we have it. Two UEF and two A on there for Team 1. Let's check out Team 2 now. Yeah, first of all, rear guard air position. It's the uh, winner of this week's uncomfortable... <laughs> Awkward name award, Usuk Madik, or we'll call him Madik for obvious reasons today. He's going Aeon in baby blue, opening first land. Over at the cliffs now in electric blue, we've got Achieve Jaguar, our first spiky space socialist of the day, going cyber opening first land, second air in electric blue. On the causeway, he didn't hang about. He's going to get to the middle first by the looks of things. Uh, once upon a time, we knew him as Farms, but now we know him as the Wheelie. There he is in burgundy red going a Seraphim. And last but not least, at the beach. Down here, having already left his base, looks like he's going up to support the wheelie. In fact, in Ferrari red, it's Inquisition Noob, another Seraphim. So the two Seraphim red players there. He went first land and second air. So there we have it. It is Aeon to Seraphim and a Cybran for Team 2. Game quality at 94%. That's pretty good going for a custom game. This isn't ladder. Remember, these guys put these things, or put this thing together themselves. So this is not AI balanced. 94%. We're happy with that. Wheelie's moved right up to the middle and was on a cigarette break there for a minute. But no, he's uh, decided to get to work finally and is going to go scoopy scoopy a massy massy UD about to rock up right next to him but I'm guessing we're probably going to see a lot more of the reclaim thing going on instead of 
the engagement. When he first shows up, he will fire a couple of shots, but then start going after the mass. Now, what's interesting is, by the looks of things, there is no support coming up from either Daxton or Nexus for UD on the causeway for Team 1. So the extra variable up here moving up for Team 2 will be the introduction of Inquisition. Now, we've had a scout plane roll over the top from Nexus. He spotted the inbound ACU. Will this make UD drop back? He doesn't have to worry about it too much. If he does come into a close encounter, of course, he's right next to the water here. He can just dip off into the ocean there and save himself. The wheelie, Takamaka <laughs> GG. Uh, I love that. A little bit of direct conversation there between players on Team 2 and Team 1. The Weedy's going to go off towards the Salem wrecks on the coastline up here. Yudi's going to go after the tanks a little bit further down, but Inquisition is going to turn up. Is he going to go straight after Yudi's com? Yudi looking like he might be turning away from the rest of this mass field. He has got a few more tanks further down that he can scoop up, so nothing too bad on the horizon for him on the mass scooping front side islands have gone towards their respective players this one over here on the east going towards nexus this one up here on the west going towards achieve jaguar so no early denies there or anything like that getting a little bit of a fighter screen out actually from both uh, sets of beach players but only one set of cli uh, one cliff player that's achieve jaguar who's got a few inties just Drifting off the causeway over here, west or slightly northwest of the wheelie's position. Let's get a quick look on mass totals. What are we looking at here? Generated eco, it's 190 versus 180, something like that. It's fluctuating a little bit, but in favor of Team 1. And Team 1 are up in total mass by about 1.5k. In terms of reclaim, it's more or less neck and neck, so... The addition of a second commander for Team 2 in the center hasn't paid off massively. They're ever so slightly ahead. It's ticked over just a bit, but uh, otherwise it's not made a huge impact on the game. I'm wondering if the removal of extra build capacity in the main base down here will affect the encounter in the bottom pond as the game progresses. We are only six minutes into it so far. We've got a long build-up phase ahead of us, of course, while these... Uh, teams get to work on pumping out their naval units and whatnot. Speaking about the naval game, engineers at the side island over here getting their first naval factory in play for Nexus. Achieve Jaguar is way ahead of the curve, though. He's got that up and running, has already spat out a few units, has gone for two frigates and a sub right off the bat, and the first frigate is almost at the two base shipyards over here for Daxton. Daxton has spat out a Tiger Shot sub of his own, though. Presumably, he will turn that around to engage the frigate. Is he going to try and get the frigate in here to engage some of these engineers? The civvies are now on the run. They suspect that's going to be the case. One or two of these might come a cropper here as he sails in behind the shipyard. One down. And his brother, Kevin, he's going to go down to very, very sad. That looks like five engineers that might make it out, though. A little bit of a complimentary spank on the behind there for Tristan. He likes a bit of that anyway. He won't be too upset about that. Always good. Tristan's up for a laugh. Always likes to party, that one. Inquisition noob now in the center. Hoovering up the tree line for every ounce of mass he can get. The wheelie bringing his commander back towards the mass point up front. Difference between the two, K, two teams now is still about 1.5k or 1 and a bit k. I should say, in terms of total mass accrued. Maybe it's jumped to about 2 and a bit K now. Something like that, 2 and a bit K. And in terms of generated eco, there's very little daylight between the two teams. 303 versus 295, something like that. Fluctuating a bit, as you would expect. Uh, all in all, though, it's been a relatively muted start. I think that's fair to say. We are 8 minutes in. We've seen a, the tiniest amount of engagement over here, but so far, UD happy to drop back, but he's not yielded that much territory. He's still sitting on the forward mass point, so map control on the causeway is absolutely 50-50, despite there being a 2v1 situation over here. Everybody is concerned with the macro, it would seem. We're not going to get any 
early harass off the bat. We've got a, the odd frigate moving in here and there. Obviously, we saw the Chief Jaguar go after some of the units of built capacity around Daxon's base. And now we've got one moving in from Nexus here. Is he going to be able to make it towards the engineers? The engineers are already, already bugging out from the naval yard back here. But to be honest, I think the two defending frigates over here for Inquisition are going to be able to sink that frigate. Down it goes. So no joy there for Nexus. Interceptors from Achieve Jaguar running air cover over the top of Maddox's base. Maddox, who's now working on the T3 air factory. How does that equate to Turbo's progress or turbo's progress he is already at t3 so in fact madic who is a good hundred global ranking points ahead of turbo if these uh what's the word rounded figures are to be believed uh madic who's 2400 turbo is at 2300 actually he finds himself behind turbo in terms of development turbo working on quantum reactor technology getting his first reactor in play that will allow him to start pumping out air superiority fighters incidentally apologies if you can still hear my mouse wheel squeaking i can't remember whether it was on the patreon channel or the main channel that i was asking people whether or not i should wd-40 it it's not actually my mouse wheel i have a little game pad so i have dual mouse wheels you probably noticed the uh that uh, with the different phases of zooming in, it's probably a bit zoom and then zoom and zoom. It's always been like that because I use utilize the two mouse wheels to try and minimize the jerkiness. I have them on low, low uh, scrolling speed. Uh, but yeah, the track or the mouse wheel on the sort of game pad that I use on the other side, that's the thing that started squeaking. Hopefully it's not coming through on the track too much. Let me know if it is, and I will have to look into remedies for it, because I can imagine that will get old. But where are we now? So we're at 10 minutes, or 10 minutes and 40 seconds, something like that, and we're still yet to see any major encounters kicking off anyhow we've had no drops we've had no attempts on either of the side islands the causeway is completely muted yet still two acus are stone throws away from each other we are however getting some lovely template building going on from the wheelie there's a couple of engineers moving up to throw down some heart-shaped wall sections there just to make sure that the game is kicked off in the right spirit Love, not hate. Just because we're trying to kill each other doesn't mean we can't all get on. Subs with a little bit of an encounter in a top pond there. That's going to be a small win. I almost said on the ground, but not. It's in, in the ocean or in the pond for Achieved Jaguar. Now, we usually see Causeway players drift off to assist one way or the other. It'll be interesting... To note if that's the case in this game as we go forward. Again, probing attacks by Nexus, shut down by what seems to be an inc ever increasingly powerful navy for Inquis uh, Inquisition. We seem to get the same strength attacks each time with one or two frigates inbound from Nexus, but bit by bit the number of defending frigates is increasing. RAS upgrade on the way for Maddock. That's his first upgrade so far. The wheelie. Yet to get an upgrade on his com. Inquisition, similar situation. Haka maka maka. Same sort of deal. So yeah, it's all very understated so far. RAS complete for Maddock, starting a RAS. And they're still talking to each other. I love it. Mass in storage. Asking him how much he's got. UD says zero. The wheelie says GG. And then he says 4K. That's how much he's floating. And he actually is floating 4K. Was UD lying? Well, he's lying a bit. He's floating some 2.5K. 
I was always taught that you don't want to be floating mass, but these guys know a hell of a lot better than I do, so I'm not going to question them. GG again. Maybe that's what he's saying. He's floating the mass and so he's doing badly. Maybe that's the point. I misread the, the joke there. It's all perfectly possible. I regularly misread social situations. chatting in Discord the other day how my wife keeps telling me that I'm on the spectrum. I very, very may well be. It's quite possible. Made a horrible misjudgment when we got new neighbours in. But that's a whole other story. So engineers out from Nexus now around the main base or at the cliffs massing out onto the water to get to work on new naval yards down there. We already have a whole line of naval yards up at the side island. Similar situation really to achieve Jaguar. And you can see just how consistent these players are in the meta. Main naval yards up around the side island and the naval yards down here around the main base are of secondary importance, a secondary consideration. And now we're starting to see upgrades come along for some of these other commanders. The wheelie going for T2 and then T3. Turbo 2 completes RAS and then starts a RAS. It's almost like a carbon copy of what just happened with Maddock a minute ago. T2 upgrade on the way for Daxton. Look at that. Gets a real boost from the engineers around him. And then going straight for T3 on from that. So this is like a full-on macro game now. There's no question about it. No one is pressing. Everybody is simply sitting back, building up their eco. Generated eco. Team 1's ahead. 9.36 to 8.55. Total mass. 3.60 versus 3.40 in favor of Team 1. So that's pretty solid. Engineer being transferred down here. First was transferred over to the wheelies control and then it was all gifted over to Inquisition. wonder what he wants with that specifically. Control Cade, his original land factory. Quick naval yard count now, just to keep track of general build power in the ponds. T1 naval yards, we've got nine over there for Inquisition on Team 2. His opponent, Nexus, has some um, eight, but he does have a T2 naval yard HQ, so he's ahead ever so slightly. Situation in the top pond, Daxton on a rather paltry five, I think it's fair to say. Compare that to Achieve Jaguar. And uh, he's sitting on six as well. So slightly fewer numbers of naval yards in the top pond than there are in the bottom pond. T2 upgrade on the way now for UD. That just flew up. Absolutely insane. T3 upgrade follows on straight after. All of these guys going down the same route now. It's all going to escalate very quickly once we get through this early phase because everyone's stockpiling eco and then there will be a lot of production capability. Softening you all up now. I apologize if I miss things in this but when it goes... It's going to go like poo off a shovel. Turbo 2 about to complete. I think it was T3 he was working on there. Already has the ARAS, of course, and the Tech 2. And Inquisition having hoovered up all of the tree line. Absolutely stripped bare that causeway with the exception of a little glade over here. 
Seraphim concerned by conservation of sparrows. That's a very important sparrow nesting site in there. It's often left out of their conquest manifesto. People forget about that. Seraphim, huge fans of sparrows. Handful of subs for Nexus find themselves surrounded by hostile vessels, although only one or two sub capable ships or capable of shooting back at subs. We've got the odd destroyer here, but it might be enough. There it is. Just enough to take those subs down. Destroyer in the mix. Things starting to heat up ever so slowly. Yet yeah, not a lot of production going on out of the T2 Naval HQ. One more destroyer moving in for Nexus. Is Nexus floating mass? No, he's not. He's working on more reactors back at his main base. Look at this. One of the first offensive moves. And it's a lone governor up against the edge of the causeway here. Just lobbing some cruise missiles in towards a mass extractor down here. Which has taken some damage. But uh, I'm guessing it was these support commanders here that quickly threw down some tactical missile defense. To deal with those inbound missiles. Nice little fire base going up on the front line for UD. Wow, he's even got mass fabricators connected to the mass storage around that T3 mechs. To even bother upgrading that forward mass extractor to T3, that's not something you see every day. In fact, the forward one that did belong to the wheelie there, that's subsequently been destroyed. I'm wondering if it's down to this cruiser. This cruiser does have nine kills to its name, although it might be about to run a cropper as a couple of those support commanders we saw a moment ago beginning to move in towards it. It repositions. Are we going to get a quick torpedo launcher build right next to it? How much attention is Nexus paying? He is engaging. He's microing some of these units and moving these as well. Might not be paying attention to the... Ah, none of this torpedo launcher business. We're just going to reclaim that ship. Is he going to get away from the re reclaim beam? Oh, just 240 hit points left. He's going to sneak out of there, but then they build the torpedo launcher. Now nah, you're not going anywhere, my friend, except the bottom of the ocean. Very nice play from the wheelie, who is starting to assist. It looks like in the bottom pond has brought out a few support commanders and is instantly going for a T3 naval HQ right next to the naval yards of Inquisition. <clears throat> naval yards over here upgrading to T3. To match the HQ over here, which is now working on Neptune class battle cruisers. Not sure we ever actually mentioned the spread. So, top rated player in this game is Nexus at 2,500. Then we've got a couple of 2,400s over on Team 2. That would be Maddock and the Wheelie. Inquisition Noob. On 2100, UD Hakamaka on 2200, Turbo 2, sorry, is 2300, probably should have mentioned that, and then short stacking the field, although it sounds ridiculous to say that when you're talking about a 2000 rated player. Chief Jaguar over here, and uh, Daxton also at 2000. Support commanders being airdropped in over here, and some. Seraphim torpedo bombers going after a cruiser. They're going to pick that off in one pass. Few of them bit the dust, but 
they got their target. However, Nexus moving in to repay the favor with some air superiority fighters. Those torpedo bombers are going to get shot down. Lots of uh, chatter and banter going off in chat. Look at this, though. Support commanders out from UD going straight for a Tempest. A giant pink diaphragm. <laughs> That's what they look like, I'm sorry. And he's going to start spamming those out by the looks of things. That will dramatically increase the probability of a win in the top pond for Team 1. Although, I mean, in sheer numbers, it looks like Chief Jaguar is holding out pretty well. But, of course, he's holding out with a, a Cyber Navy versus the UEF Navy equipped with their shield boats and those summits, which is a hellish combination. We do have a little roving band of Barracuda subs over here, which can cause all sorts of problems. The typical response for... A UEF player against large numbers of subs is, of course, the Atlantis spam. We might see some of that in the bottom pond because we've also got these T3 sub hunters, which are coming out now from the wheelie. This little group of naval units up here might be in trouble as they're taking some inbound fire from said sub hunters. It sounds strange calling them sub hunters when they're subs. It's like in that respect, aren't all subs sub hunters? always bothered me. No subs still alive. It looked like them for a minute they were going to move in to harass these vessels down here, but no kicking around this area still. They finish off the last destroyer. Frigates going to follow after that. We have three or four battleships in the area down here for Inquisition. We've got about six sub hunters up here for the wheelie. And another experimental out for UD in the top pond. That's a lot of air superiority fighters as well. 258 ASFs on the field for Turbo 2 and Team 1. Maddock has some 203, so he's a tiny bit off the, the pace there in matching with his opponent. These sub-hunters able to act with impunity thanks to the lack of torpedo boats and destroyers. Lots and lots of shield vessels, though, doing their level best to protect these larger ships. Some six bulwark ships in that mix. Thanks to the sub-hunters, the shields have been weakened. Inquisition able to move in with his own vessels behind them. We are getting some Coopers out now. That's what they were lacking. Sub-hunters need to drop back, let the battleships pick those off at range. It's all a fairly important piece of choreography, getting that exchange correct. Going on over here, spy planes for the wheelie, right at the edge of the screen. Corona's ASFs in a holding pattern above Achieved Jaguar's fleet. They seem to be quite fragmented, actually. Has there been a large fight that I have missed? No, not really. 241. Similar situation to what we saw before. UD completes another experimental. That's his third Tempest. At the rate he's going, this whole area is going to be saturated. And then these galaxies are going to be massively outranged. And unable to repel the firepower. And unable to penetrate these defences as well, thanks to all these shield boats. This is looking like it might be a tough ask in the top pond for a Chief Jaguar, unless he gets some major assistance either in the in the sea from Maddock getting involved up here 
Or the wheelie getting involved as well, assisting in both ponds simultaneously. Usually you see the causeway player assist one of his teammates, rarely both. I do get the feeling this top pond's going to go only one way. The sheer number of tempests that are being produced and the sheer speed at which they're being produced. UD is pulling in 930 mass. How is he doing that? Well, look at all the quantum gateways he's got. He is churning out presumably RAS preset support commanders. Yes, there they are. And they're throwing down these mass fab farms. The wheelie is doing a similar situation, similar thing. He's on 750 mass. Some 200 mass behind. And you can see all of the mass fab farms that he's got. He's got a slightly different template going though by the looks of things there they are t3 power plants meeting t3 mass fabs whereas uh ud ud is stamping mass fabs with mass storage so these are going to be incredibly power intensive power hungry things in terms of power generation ud's bringing in about 47k the wheelie's bringing in 81k. How is his power? Well, you see, he's not he's not got a lot of headroom on his power production. The wheelie has a lot of headroom on his power production, but he is behind by some 200 mass. So if he can hold on to this tenuous power balance, Yudi's actually in the slightly better position eco-wise and he is able to churn out these tempests which is going to put a chief jaguar in a very precarious situation indeed the more and more of these that get pumped into this top pond the harder life is going to get things really kicking off now all over the place we've got an air fight squaring off right over the middle of the map both ponds are in full flux right now Nexus are slowly being driven back by a combination of Inquisition and the Wheelie. Tempest under construction now from Madik, who's It's interesting that he has gone to assist the bottom pond and he hasn't gone to try and alleviate pressure in the top pond. It's almost like they're writing off the top pond. Nexus already says, yeah, I will lose. He thinks this is going only one way. I tell you, 2,500... He knows his stuff, so let's not argue with him and assume that is going in favour of Team 2. But I think it's fair to say Top Pond certainly going in the other direction. No question about it. That inbound Galaxy Fire struggling to break through those shields. Those Cybran battleships have to stay constantly on the move, lest they fall foul of those outrageous weapons on the Tempests. One more volley like that, and that battleship's going to join its brethren at the bottom of the sea. I will slowly lose here, says Jaguar. So both of the cliff players feel like the writing's on the wall for them. 31 minutes gone so far. Turbo continues to expand his power gen capabilities at the back there. Hello! Paragon started right at the back of Maddox's base. Just 50 odd hit points and climbing. It's got a long, long way to go. But bit by bit, we're getting more and more engineers brought in to work on it. Madik is pulling in 850 mass per tick. Turbo is pulling in only 640. So Madik has leapfrogged him somewhat. Total mass. Team 1 ahead by some 80,000 which is not a great deal when you're talking about 
war on this kind of scale. Generated eco, team one up by about a hundred mass. Something in that range. But yeah, I think Nexus was right to cool the situation. Lots of GG's going out. It's like, this isn't GG yet. We're nowhere near GG. But certainly, it might just be jokes. Certainly the bottom pond, I think, is done. Look at how fast this has collapsed. Torpedo bombers from Madic now being brought in against these ships. The last shields capitulate. So much inbound artillery fire. That's unreal. Look at the sheer number of Seraphim battleships here from both the Wheelie and Inquisition. Yeah. Nexus absolutely mobbed. That's going to be the end of this. It's going to be the end of the side island. The main base will be next. UD's forward base over here and all of these facilities that were pumping out these support commanders will be in a similar situation. But check out the top pond. Is the situation any better or any worse? I think it's broadly the same. Less clusterage perhaps. But that side island has already been peppered. All of the mechs is destroyed. Chief Jaguar not even trying to produce out of these naval yards. It would just be a waste of mass to do so. How are we doing on the Paragon? It's still deep in the red. Done about 10%. going on up here a counter paragon which has a lot larger commitment i think it's fair to say than madic is pumping out that is how is he floating a huge quantity of mass by any chance yes he is that won't continue at that rate for long oh he's getting huge quantities of mass being dumped into the coffers there i'm loving this teamwork going on from team one they are flooding turbo two with mass trying to get that paragon up as quickly as possible and look at it it's already half done it was started so long after maddox wow what's maddox situation right now on his he's not even in the yellow yet he's about to tick over to one fifth there we go 20% done. Very different state of affairs. And this could be absolutely crucial. We've seen so many times a Paragon change the nature of a game. It hasn't uh, got to switch one way or the other since it's broadly a stalemate right now. I don't know if it's stalemate's the right word because the game is definitely flowing. We're losing the main base right now of a Chief Jaguar that is being obliterated. Similar story over here. Nexus's main base is in bits. Rear reactors now getting taken down by long range artillery fire from those battleships. But this will be an absolute game changer, a complete change of tempo. As soon as that completes, we're going to see all this build capacity presumably go straight to work. I'd imagine on some artillery, get a salvation up there. He's going to want to absolutely swamp this area with shielding. Are Team 2 even remotely aware, A, that they're building this? B, how quickly and how well it's going? No, they have no idea. They have not scouted in some time. I say some time, this has gone up incredibly quickly. That might be a record for how fast I've seen one of those built without uh, one of these already being in operation and what did I tell you straight for a salvation some engineers protecting it against the tele snipe threat from a chief jaguar support commander going pop somewhere in the background there as more and more engineers flood into the area to start work on that salvation that thing is just gonna fly up like a block of Chinese real estate. Let's hope it doesn't get detonated quite so quickly. 
Paragon over here, now at 3,400 hit points out of 5,000. And this is where the game really takes off. What have we got here, though? A GC. So I did see support commanders down here from Madic. They worked on a GC and a Tempest. Tempest is over here, bombarding things. What was left of Yudi's base has been torn asunder by all of these battleships. And Yudi's actually transferred more or less everything over to Nexus now. And is actually marching his comm forward. Waiting for the end. He knows his time here is broadly done. GC rolls into range. And our first ejection of the game today is going to be UD. He's going to be death by laser face in the side of the head as he nonchalantly saunters past. Bosh! At 38 minutes, we are a man down for Team 1. Full share will be on, so infrastructure won't be affected. But the salvation is up, and it is firing, and a second salvation is almost up. The Paragon has finally been completed for Madik, who is now in a race to get his own offensive weaponry up and litter this area with shields. And he better get a wriggle on because that fire is going to be constant and unending. And before he knows it, he's going to have a second... Oof. A second artillery piece raining down on him. And the Paragon gets clipped there down to 3,600. And a buttload of engineers went up in that fireball as well. He's still got a decent amount of build capacity. And don't forget, he's got his commander sitting right here as well. So if that goes up, when those paragons go pop, they are a effective nuke. So that will be the end of Madic And everything he holds dear. Jaguar's base has gone, but he's currently working on a Scathis. This game really is escalating quickly. Lots of gunships massing over here for Turbo, who has the second Salvation. He's working on Salvation 3 now. More shield gens going up to cover that all the time. A truckload of SMD going up. None of them yet loaded. We have a lot of Seraphim battleships down here, remember, and they can launch nukes. I don't know if they're building them, though. But, oh, the shield collapses down here. Madic. Oh, loses all his engineers around the Paragon, which is down to 400 hit points. He is not yielding. He's not running. If he doesn't win with this Paragon, he's not going to win at all. That's what he's decided. Oh, gets another shield gen up just in time. He's losing too many engineers, though, to be able to keep up with this constant inbound spam. The Paragon is vulnerable once again. Boom, baby! Down he goes. Nuke out from over here. Things kicking off now. I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to slow things up just a smidge because I really don't want to miss anything. I said it was going to go like this. Nothing worse than missing the action. Nuke out from the Seraphim battleships over here belonging detected. to Inquisition. Strategic it's going straight detected. in after the Paragon. Do we have anti-nukes loaded? That's the question. Well, none of these silos. Are there any other anti-nukes in the area? I can't believe it. Wow. Now that's a game changer. Bosh. Down goes the Paragon and all of the salvations with it. Another nuke inbound. Nexus nearby the impact site. We've already seen one nuke sail right the way overhead. We have strategic missile defense, but nothing is loaded. Most of these are sailing into the backfield, though. I don't think the wheelie or Inquisition, whoever's firing these nukes, realized just how easy it was going to be to penetrate the defenses with these nukes. But the next one is dropping short, and that's going to kill not only a Salvation, but Nexus as well. I think, yes! Oh my god, what a turnaround. Down he goes. Another nuke into the backfield that's going to take out all of Turbo's infrastructure. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Another nuke in over here. There is another Paragon that's gone up right the way over to the edge. Just wow. 
Meanwhile, the salvation continues to rain down on this side of things. Is it a turnaround? It certainly looks like convincing. Huge holes torn in the infrastructure of Team 1 up here. There are a lot of strategic missile submarines massing down here. Strategic launch detected. Another or a whole load of nukes out from over here. Where are they going? Are they going into the backfield or are they going to the beach? Oh, was that a teleport? So Inquisition noob teleported up here. What did I <laughs> just jump into? I really don't know. That wasn't uh, Inquisition. That was Hakamaka. So a teleport attempt up here. And it got what it came for. It killed off the Paragon. But he has bowed out as a result. The nukes land and take out the Scathis that Jaguar had just completed over here. Oh my god. And that was with me at minus one. And I still couldn't keep up with it. Absolutely insane. I told you this game was going to escalate quickly with all of that build up. We're still seeing the shells land from the Scathis that went down. Control K out for Turbo. Essentially he was done. So now it is just a 2v1. Daxton versus the Wheelie and Achieve Jaguar. This is mayhem. Absolute mayhem. Chief Jaguar moving his comm out of the backfield over here. God, if I, if only they'd been able to get up a decent amount of strategic missile defense up here. This game would have been over. Team 1 would have had it. Too many Seraphim battleships down here. Too many nukes. And then, of course, the counter nukes down here from the subs. I wasn't expecting to see Inquisition bow out like this, but actually... You could kind of argue on paper, yes, he's traded his life away, but all of the infrastructure is still there. The wheelie, excuse me, still has control of all of his stuff. He traded his life to get rid of the Paragon up here, which is what he must have done. Just wow. Unreal. And then there were three. Solace is queuing up for a Chief Jaguar over here. Where is... Daxton's comm. There he is. If they get a read on that comm and they can sneak those solaces up there without getting shot down by any of this huge horde of ASFs. Not an easy thing to do, admittedly. But that would be an easy way to finish this game right here, right now. I love that. What did I just walk into a while back from UD? He must have gone AFK and then come back to the keyboard. <laughs> And just seen the absolute carnage that had unfurled. Nukes out from the battleships continue to flow. Anti nuke here still not loaded, and that's the target. More P gens going to go up in nuclear fire. Wow, that really hit everything. Volatile explosions going up. Ooh, down goes a GC as well. Goodness me. Yes, there will have been all sorts of things that will have gone down, guys, around the map that I will have missed. Apologies for that, but there is just no possible way, short of me moving it down to plus 10. I don't think that would be fun for anybody. Doesn't really give you a sense of just how crazy the game is and what tempo it's moving at. Even at plus, uh, minus 1, sorry, it's a little bit of a, a cop-out. Nuke coming out again from this pile of battleships moving into the last real main base left for Team 1, Daxton's original base over at the beach, another nuke inbound in that direction, just trying to overwhelm these strategic missile defences, there's two anti-nukes left in this silo so he's going to have to fire at least two more and there might be another one before too long as well. That's ticking up pretty fast. Telly in South Sea and make Billy easy, says Strategic Turbo. So Turbo detected. is telling Daxton to Telly down here and go after, I'm guessing going after the, the wheelie. I mean, that still doesn't change the fact that he's he's got a Chief Jaguar to worry about. 
Where is a Chief Jaguar? He's moving out to this forward shielded section over here. Defence satellite circling above. Taking pot shots at things. What a crazy, crazy game. Strategic launch detected. ASF numbers 315 for Daxton. And now we're looking at 404 for Achieve Jaguar with some 13 bingo on fuel. We still have all of these strategic missile submarines down here which could launch another volley of nukes before too long. They're not currently loaded. Daxton, he's not floating a huge amount of mass. He's using his eco. Another nuke inbound. Is he finally out of anti-nukes? Not yet. That's the last one for now. And it's going to be a while before that one loads. So if there's another nuke anytime soon, that will be the end of the beach base. Support commanders spamming up Zars. They are down here. Well, these are all Tempests. UD's old temper Tempest exchanging fire with some of the battleships belonging to the wheelie just on the other side of the causeway Strategic over here. The nukes continue to flow. Oh, he's going long. Not landing one in here, but going for the P-Gens in the backfield. Currently putting out 691 and 87k power. That drops to 583 mass and 73k power. That's going to drop even further with the demolition of all of these reactors. That takes him down to 56k power. That's a huge hole in his energy production considering where it was. He is now right on the breadline at current expenditure. Plus 4. So that's got to hurt. That's going to hamper him somewhat. Zars now getting into the mix here. One Zar from Achieve Jaguar getting caught by Daxton's Air Force. Where is Achieve Jaguar's Air Force? Did so? Oh, it's all the way up here. Why is it all the way up there? He's left himself wide open to Zar attack. A Zar attack, which I guess he didn't know was coming. A Zar attack is drifting in towards the commander now. ASF's hurriedly moving back from the front line. He had his own. Zars moving in for attack as well. Engineers and support commanders desperately spamming up transcenders as quickly as possible. Jaguar loitering under the last operational shield gens, but they're running out thick and fast. Gets a little bit cooked there, but he's alright. One more shield pops up, but then it goes down and Jaguar is out! It is now a 1v1. Then Jaguar's air force shows up. He's going to win the air battle, presumably, because I think he's got a lot more ASFs and all of this fighting that just went down did so over the top of friendly anti-air emplacements. So air advantage now fully with Team 2, but it is now a 1v1. What's the chat? I don't know, none of my SMDs are loaded. What is the chat now? He's somewhere there. Strategic They're pinging detected. places. They have got these spy planes kicking about. Are they getting a read? There it is. And they know where he is. They've correctly identified Team 1 where the wheelies com is. Nukes still flying into the backfield, taking out more infrastructure, although a brand new anti-nuke silo took care of that one. He's going to have to billy him. Do it. He, he will torp your subs. He's going to have to change. He's going to have to lose his shoulder drone upgrade for a, a teleporter upgrade. And if he does go for that, he's then got to change it again twice because he's got to upgrade it. Because it all occupies the same slot, right? So he's got to upgrade it from the teleporter upgrade again 
to the TAC missile upgrade and then convert that to the Billy Nuke upgrade and then load a Billy Nuke. That's quite a big ask with everything going on. He's got time, he's not under immediate pressure and he is still keeping his opponent busy with nuke spam and the like. He has lost air advantage though. I'm imagining at least one of these nukes will break through. Launch detected. Four, three, two, one. Bosh! The last one makes it, takes out all of those reactors. And yet still the wheelie is pulling in 79k power. So it hurts him, but it doesn't hurt him too much. That's going to be a lot of dead shield boats that he can't power anyway by the looks of things. Jesus. I don't know which vessel fired that and how many kills it just got. That's on 161 kills. It was probably that one. Oh, that's on 135. Who could say? All of these guys have been spaffing nukes out like no tomorrow. Little fat boy production center over here. Pumping those out. Another Tsar makes it over the top of an anti-nuke. If he was going for that, very unfortunately, he overshoots it. If that was the purpose. But there's the teleporter upgrade. 57% done there. 52 minutes into this game. It's a 1v1. And we are now moving into the snipey, snipey plays. Nuke still flying everywhere. Let's just have a look. He's still got spy planes circling over Strategic here, but has he lost detected. track of where he has he, where he is? Because the wheelie has moved a little bit. He's now considerably further southwest than he was last time we checked in with him. Teleporter is complete. Is he going to try and reacquire the position of the wheelie's comm before he makes an attempt? Another couple of nukes land on top of these Tempests. I mean, it's fun. It's nice to take them out of the running and off the field and get more kills. But at this point, no one's going to try and make an incursion into either pond, you wouldn't think. I'm just amazed that with the air advantage, we're not seeing more scouting going off looking for Daxton. Uh, is the wheelie unaware that he's even in the pond? Wheelie has taken down low another three Tempests over there. He's having fun. Blissfully unaware of the potential inbound threat. The teleportation is underway. Has he found the commander? can't see an exit gate anywhere there it is right the way down in the bottom corner remember he has to now change the teleporter upgrades for the tac missile and the billy nuke upgrades and immediately he gets to work on that so that's probably why he decided to go as far away as possible to be as safe as possible a transport inbound for the com and the wheelie now moving his commander right next what so the tac missile upgrade went really quickly the tactical nuke is going slower it's a lot more eco intensive he'll have i don't think this is not intentional he's just trying to keep his commander safe he's he'll have been aware that he would have been scouted over here with spy planes he still has no idea that daxton is there and daxton has no idea that he is there this is absolutely insane. It Literally, everything else that's happening on the map right now doesn't matter. It's completely redundant. It's not going to change the game. It's what happens here that will define who wins this game, which team comes out on top. Look at the huge amount of mass that Daxton is floating. He's full bar. He couldn't give a monkeys right now. He has the nuke upgrade. He hasn't got the nuke loaded yet, though. They've got no sonar on board, either of these comms, so they can't see it. There's still pings going off and what have you elsewhere. Strategic Look, he's detected. right on the edge of his field of view. Make sonar with ACU, says Turbo. That's actually a Strategic phenomenal idea. Detected. That will reveal the wheelie's location to Daxton, whilst keeping Daxton... 
Shrouded. Ping. There they are. This is what the wheelie can see. Oh my god. Lots of pings going off. There's still a transport nearby. He is building the billy nuke. He gets to work on a rail gun because he doesn't want the wheelie to evac. Control K says Nexus. So Daxton might have started a control K. Oh, never mind. Okay, draw. No Sam. Control K. Nexus telling him to control K. That might be a horrible error. The wheelie's just picked himself up right in front of that rail gun. But I don't think the rail gun got time to shoot it down. I'm sure it would have done. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> I have no idea. It's a draw. That's all I know. GG's all out. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous ending to that game. The game where nothing happened for 25 minutes at the start of it. And then all hell broke loose. Then you get down to two players. You have this ridiculous, absurd cat and mouse game in the bottom 3% of the map. Down here at the bottom right-hand corner. And I'm still not sure. Did he control K? He must have control K'd. And that's what took down... The transport which detonated the wheelie's commander. If it had got such a shame he couldn't get the, the win out with the billy. But you know what? I'll take it. That's highly entertaining. What a fantastic ending to that game. Absolute mayhem. I'm sorry I will have missed stuff. But I know I, I miss stuff all the time. But no caster would have been able to run this game at normal speed. And show you all of the salient parts of what's going on. Because... At around the 35 minute mark, it went haywire. We had four com kills in the space of just over two minutes. At around the 40 minute mark, something like that. It went bananas. Uh, and there will have been attacks going off, other stuff going on. There was no way I would have been able to cover it short of dropping down to minus 10. So apologies for that. Uh, but I hopefully I caught most of the action. But absolute craziness. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget, guys, if there's more, if you're fancying more Subcom, you've seen everything on the main channel, you don't currently subscribe to Patreon. It's just a dollar a month. It's huge support to me. And we have new content coming all the time, new content, content every week. And, of course, once you're on the Patreon, you can come and hang out with us all in the Discord where we have a nice family atmosphere. And I've got r fantastic people like Regal Eagle. Thank you to him for supplying today's replay. My official replay curator He's come in once again uh, out of the out of the woods, out of his little hole in the woods, his little farmhouse he's got in there. And he supplied me with replays, saved my bacon again for the week. And uh, yeah, so if you feel so inclined, come and join us all. Join us. It's a mere dollar a month. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Until next time, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile signing out.